Okay, we break into this message about strength, sex, and money. Quite an interesting little subject here. Strength, you know, muscles and sex and money. Three great things to be talking about. All in one, I guess. Let's take our Bibles to Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. And we'll build a foundation. Who are we talking about? Revelation 1, 6. Revelation 1 6. And we'll start in verse 5. From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I want to look at and has made us king. Do you know a Christian? Born again Christian? Saved by the blood we read in verse 5. You know you're a king. You're also a priest. But I want to look at for the sake of inspiration. And spiritual for our life. We are king. We're going to reign one day. If we serve the Lord. We turn to 2 Timothy 2.16. Our reign is not now. Even though the, the, the Corinthian church. Paul says I wish you were reign. Something like that. You know they thought they were reigning already. 2 Timothy 2. Verse 12. The millennial herons of the Lord Jesus Christ as, as the king of all the earth, the king of kings, the Lord of lords will sit upon David's throne in Jerusalem. And those Christians that served the Lord and done right and were vessels clean of God will be given cities for their towns. And it says in verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Suffering as a Christian. For the fact is, for the word of God and for the Lord Jesus Christ, not for being an idiot or a fool. For all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay? So we are kings. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we shall suffer, we'll reign. That's pretty good for a hell-bound sinner. Now let's look at the Christian life in the Bible as kings. When it comes to strength, sex, and money. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14. We'll read through this first. When thou art come into the land, that's Jewish, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Jewish, and shall possess it, Jewish, they get the land, not the Christian. I'm spiritualizing this. Doctrine, it's for the nation of Israel. And say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, and they do, wrong. They didn't want God as their king, they wanted a man, strength. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Go ahead and do it. God says, Whom the Lord thy God shall choose, David. Saul was the people's choice. One from among thy brethren. Brethren. Don't we call each other brethren, brothers and sisters in the Lord? You have no right to call an unsaved person a king or a brother. Okay. That's point number one. 
we're not talking about. We're going to get into strength, sex, and money. That's where, you know, some of you didn't hear strength and money. Thou shalt set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee. For the, for the Jews, it would be a Gentile. For the church, it would be anybody who's lost. Which is not thy brother, a Jew. Okay, here we go. But he shall not multiply horses to himself. Solomon did. Nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Solomon did. To the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Number two. There's the strength. Number two. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. That. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold, money. And it shall be when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, the Bible, out of that which is before the priest of the Levites. It shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. Daily Bible reading for the king that's under the blood that's going to reign. Will you read that Bible at lunchtime for me? You Bible thumper. You think you're holy in it now? Okay. Learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all his words of this law, these statutes to do unto them. Now, there's one thing really interesting that over the kings of Israel, we have something they don't. We have the complete Bible, the complete Word of God. So, in chapter 17, there is the law concerning the king. There were standards. Verse 15 is to be brethren, the saved for us. No lost man is a king. Revelation 1, 5 told us that we're bought by the blood. All right, verse 16 of Deuteronomy 17. Horses, military status, beauty. There are some horses that are just mired because of what brand or what type of horse it is. Of where they come from. Of what stock they are. It's a status symbol. It's a military. When you go to these parks and there, there's a soldier, he's on a horse. And the position of the horse will tell you if that man died in battle, died of old age. And I forget the third one. Verse 17, wives, spouse, women. Verse 17, gold and silver, money. Strength sex and money verse 18 the authorized king if the king wrote it if we are kings we should write our own Bible but we have a King James Bible look at that they didn't say America to write the Bible you know the modern they didn't tell Revised to write the Bible, you know, Revised. King James Bible. Out of the priest, out of the law, so it can't be a new King James. You can't write what you want to write. you got to write what the law said, word for word. If I were to copy the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and change words, it wouldn't be a King James Bible. It would be a Stanley Hayward Bible. It wouldn't be worth nothing. Because I ain't reigning as a king. And when God chose of all the world and all the people to write his word, he chose a king. Not a pope. Not a reverend. He chose a king. Deuteronomy 17. Alright. Now. You got to be saved. You can't put your strength in man or animals. 
You have to have a proper marriage life. No excess of money. What's an excess of money going to do if when you die or the rapture happens? It ain't yours. You're going to die just like you were born. Naked. Without anything. No matter what you accumulated through life. And you got to have a Bible. And you got to read it every day. Deuteronomy 17. And you know what Deuteronomy says 17? If we are kings, and, and I haven't done this. But Revelation 1 says I'm a king. I am a priest. And it says in verse 18 of Deuteronomy 17, 18, and it shall be, you thought I was going to talk about sex, didn't you? It shall be when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write, this is the king, him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests. Revelation 1, 6. We are king and priest. I haven't done this, but you know what? I think it would be perfectly proper if we were to copy the King James Bible word for word for our own Bible. You talk about having your own Bible. What about if you wrote it in your handwriting? Wouldn't that be remarkable? That's what the king was told to do by the law. Now, we're not under law. We're under grace. I bet you we probably know a lot more Bible if we wrote it ourselves. But who will take the time to do that? That'd be a lot of work. Be a lot of time, effort put to God rather than whatever you want to do for self. And what you do for self would be word, hey, or stubble, writing the word of God for your own personal copy. I don't know where that would stand in there. Would it be milk for your bones and calcium? It'd be bread to feed upon. Is it man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. Imagine right in your own Bible, every word. How about that? You want to go to the movies with us today? No, I have to write down three chapters in the Bible. Right? Three chapters? Yeah, I write and read as I do. You write to... Yeah, I'm writing the King James Bible for my own personal use. Wow, I heard of people who just read their Bible. You write it. Alright. I'll stop there for you. Psalms 20, verse 7. Now we're going to get into strength. Psalms 20, verse 7. You want me to get into the set? No. That's later. 20 verse 7. Some trust in chariots. And some in horses. I don't know where you have the chariot without the horse. I don't think the chariot is going to go anywhere without the horse unless it's downhill. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. Together they're a military, they're a, they're a traveling thing. But we will remember, isn't that what the Lord's Supper is? The name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen. But we are risen. And stand upright. No, we are the only soldiers in the world under the Christian banner of the armor of God to stand in battle. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Is your strength in man or is it in God? Psalms 20 verse 7 it is to be in God and not man. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. I am a king. I'm not some. I'm supposed to be the one that puts his trust 
in the one that saved me. Psalms 33, 17. I think. I don't know what that number is. Ten spheres. 33. 47 or 17. And it can't be 47. All right, verse 17. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver the horse any by his great strength. Well, in Psalms 20, verse 7, it says, Some, in this verse 17, any. Either some, any, or you're the king. And the horse is vain. Have you ever studied the book of Ecclesiastes about vain, vanity, nothing, from birth to death? Behold, the eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. What's a horse going to do when you in death? What's a horse going to do when you in famine? They have horse meat, that's it. It is reliance upon God and not horse. Solomon sent for the horses instead of sending for God. What do you trust in? Man or God? I'm going to get it going. Man or gun? Man-made gun. So it's either man or God. Now, is it wrong to have a gun? No. But we'll look at one more passage and we'll talk about that. Isaiah 31.1. Isaiah 31.1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, uh oh, and stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong, there's strength. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord, man or God. We are to have our strength, our full strength, and our protection. Yes, in God. Are we to have strength? Are we to have protection? Yes. But God is to be first. God is to be our deliverance. He may not want us to... to, to to use the horse. He may not want us to, to use a gun. He may not want us to use a, a stick or whatever. He may take care of it on his own. He sent among the Israel to the enemies. He sent to the enemies hornets. One battle, he said, dig a bunch of, uh, of holes in this field and water came through and the army killed the army, but it was the enemy army versus the enemy army, and the enemy army versus the enemy army, and Israel was victorious. There was a battle where the walls just came tumbling down. A man used the jawbone of an ass, and God used the man in the jawbone of the ass. I am not saying go gunless. I'm not saying go weaponless. But trust in the Lord and see what the Lord will use and what the Lord will do for you. Peter pulled out the sword and Jesus had to correct the matter. Now look at 1 Timothy 4.8. 1 Timothy 4.8. First Timothy four eight. For bodily exercise profiteth little. Mm, 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 mm. You're going to die. 
you're going to old, get old, your body's going to say snap, crackle, pop, your hip's going to go out of joint, your knee's going to be replaced, you're going to bow over, your hair's going to fall out, your, your chest is going to drop, your feet are going to be sore, your bones are going to ache, I don't care how many weights and how much push-ups you do and how many sit-ups, I don't care how far you run, you're going to get old. And you're going to get something that's going to call, ouch! Evolution's wrong. The body will break down. But, good, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Man or God? Are you relying on your own strength? Man, uh, look at me. Are you relying on God? I'm not saying don't exercise. I'm not saying don't go out and run. It's not going to do nothing for you. You can run a mile every day and do it without God and get hit by a Greyhound bus. What's that going to do you? If God don't protect in, in, in your heart, you can do exercise and from the exercise have a heart attack. Where is your strength lying in? It profits little. It doesn't say don't do it. But does God get the glory? You know, have some. Look at my hair. Look how much it weighs. On arm, no. But be armed first with God. Carrying daily your Bible. All right. John four sixteen. John four sixteen. John chapter 4, verse 16. And Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. <clears throat> the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he, number six, whom thou now hast, is not thy husband, and that thou sayest thou truly. Uh-oh. Six husbands. And the one she's with right now is not her husband. Someone else's husband. Now we're in the set. 1 Corinthians 7 2. A Christian, born again, Bible believing, blood washed, Christian, king, priest, there are a religion out there who teaches that people should not marry. They're priests. 1 Corinthians 7 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, there is to be no fornication. He's writing to a same group of people in Corinth. There is to be no fornication. Let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. Singular. That rules Utah out. Well, God allowed no, God did not allow David. David and Solomon did it. And they suffered for it. God never allowed it. I want to see. I don't know if I'm going to find this verse real quick. It came to mind. It's in Timothy. Denying the... Uh, Forbidden men to marry. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it real quick. It's not. 
We'll move on. Yeah, Lord didn't want me to have it. Um, yeah, here we go. First Timothy four. I guess the Lord does want me to have it. Talk about the sex thing. You're either gonna have sex as a man of human nature with a woman that you can marry, not in fornication, or you're gonna get your sexual pleasure from somebody else. Now watch this. First Timothy four one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that the latter times shall some depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's not something you want. Forbidding to marry. To be part of our church family. You're not to be married. Only to Christ, though. And then you wonder why you have sexual troubles in your church. But that as that's just an offsuit. Matthew nineteen four six. We'll go back to where we were. Matthew nineteen. Matthew nineteen four through six. See, there's some profound fornication, no marriage. There are some who say no marriage. Matthew nineteen four through six. Jesus speaking, wherefore they are no more twenty. Let's start verse five. And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, man and woman. Never man, man, never woman, woman. Neither man, beast, or woman, beast. No, man and woman. If you think man and man and woman and woman, that's not Bible, you idiot. You don't know how to read English. Go back to kindergarten and start English all over again. Read the Bible. Read the English. Man and woman. And they twain, husband and wife, shall be one flesh. Therefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man let not man put asunder. It was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve's. When God started the human race of marriage and sex, one man, one woman. You know who the first polygamist was in the Bible? Go check out Cain's line, his family roots. He was the first city builder. He was the one that murdered his brother first. First murder in the world. He's the first one that came up with human music. In that line, he has in his family line the first polygamist. Check it out. You go find it. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Work men's needs not to be ashamed. Write the divine word of truth. You go back and find the first man that had two wives. Sure wasn't Adam. Sure wasn't Seth. Sure wasn't Noah. All right, Matthew 5, 28. That was the words of Jesus Christ, by the way. Matthew 5, 28. But I say, here's Jesus speaking again. Whoso looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. You don't have to have a physical act. You know what I mean? Wow. Whoa. Look at that. Wow. Jesus said by doing this, this is not, this is, I'm just showing the illustration, but by doing this, you and that woman are committing adultery. Honey, what you watching? I'm watching Miss America. You just committed adultery of 50 women. 
Count them. The 50 states. Maybe 51 Puerto Rico. I don't know. I don't want that super jump. Can you imagine God calling you up according to Matthew 5, 28 and said you had 50 wives? Maybe 51? A wife in every state of the union? Well, all I was doing is watching TV. Yeah. And your thought was going. Your other things were going. You're not to multiply your wives, multiply wives unto yourself, King. And Jesus said, all you gotta do is think about it. It could be at the beach. It could be a magazine. It could be on television. It could be on a computer. It may be at the workplace. If you are looking upon a woman with lust, that's an adultery. Now, Paul said no fornication, and Jesus said no adultery. See, he's not going down to town hall, getting a license, and then standing before a, a, a man and putting a ring on a finger, and there's a marriage. There's my, uh, is he one wife? Look at that. No. That woman had five husbands, six husbands, the one that she was with, and she wasn't married to him. An act of an adultery. And Jesus says this by looking and lusting. Look and lust. There's a hymn. Look and lust. And God credits to you, King, one more wife. And the law said you're not to multiply wives to yourself. Whether flesh and flesh or eyeballs and imagination. So can a Christian look at pornographic material and be right? Not according to Matthew 5.28. You will be charged with adultery. And it says to women too. Imagine how many women out there who have bared their bodies and one sets another to attract the male species and to excite him will stand before God one day and be charged as a whore and an adulteress. Let's go. This, here's another verse. Here we're going to go off. Hebrews 13 or 12. I think it's 13. Hebrews. Watch this one. Good to know, know your Bible, and the Lord can use you. Hebrews 13.4 Marriage is honorable in all. No fornication, no adultery. Marriage. A man joining a woman, Jesus said in Matthew. When that flesh joins flesh, that's marriage, and that's honorable. Anything behind the bedroom doors between a husband and wife, God says, that's honorable. And it says... And the bed undefiled between a husband and wife. God says that's respectable and proper. Now let's say that, you know, looking at the pornographic magazines, that, that woman that exposes herself. And the man that's looking at the exposed woman. But whoremongers and adulterers, remember Matthew 5, 28? God will judge. Christian, there's a judgment seat of Christ coming for us that are saved. God will judge your fornication, and God will judge your adultery by looking at those pictures and thinking those thoughts of that woman on the television set or the woman at the grocery store or the woman that works at your desk or works at your workplace or at the beach or wherever you are, and you got that sexual thought. God says, I'll judge that. you got another wife. You want me to get off sex now? Did you enjoy that? You want more? David's on top of the roof one day. Da -de -da -de. Woo -hoo! No, it wasn't like that. David's walking around. No, they do. Oh, ooh, okay. Some woman watches. Woo! <laughs> Go car. Bigger. The adultery happened before he slept with her. It happened when he, uh, go get her. Find out who she is. 
according to Jesus, Matthew 5, 28. You don't have to be in the act. Want me to end this X talk now? Let's get into money. Oh, no. Acts 3, verse 6. Acts 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold, what it said over there, Deuteronomy 17, have I none. But such as I have, I give to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know all you need is Jesus Christ. Now I have not lived like I've had money. I need money to buy the grocery store. But you know there are people on the other side of the world. They don't have money. They have the Lord Jesus Christ and they're taken care of. And Paul says one of the perils of his life was he had to hunger. He had to go in thirst. That's a suffering. I have no food. I got to suffer. Maybe if I work on Sunday and skip church, you know, I'll get some extra money. You know, if the entire economy of America failed tomorrow, you better have Jesus Christ. You know the government of, a, of the world, whoever nation that you're in, you know they could tax you 100%. And the Bible says pay your taxes. Render to Caesar what is Caesar's. Render to God what is God. If the government came up and said 100% tax, and you and God in the Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ said, I'm going to honor the government, Romans 13. I'm going to pay all my tax." The Bible says you're obligated to be served by the Lord Jesus Christ when you have no money or gold. Somehow God will take care of you. Well, what if I die of, of, of famine and thirst and all that? To be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. He's taking care of you. And Psalm says it's more joyful with the death of the saints to God. Acts 16.30 Acts 16.30. And they and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Cash, check, or money order. Send it to us, and we'll send you a prayer hanky. Send us your check. Your inheritance says, just sign the back of it, give it to us, and all the other letters and junk in it, we'll throw in the dumpster, and we'll just keep your money. No. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you can die of no food, and die and go off to be in glory. You're taken care of. How's that? You don't need money to be saved unless you belong to a religion. Even then they can't tell you you're saved. Acts 8.20 Acts 8.20 And Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You can't buy salvation. You can't buy the gift of God. What is the gift of God? According to Romans 6.23, the gift of God is Jesus Christ. You can't buy it. Don't think you're going to walk up to God at the judgment in the pearly gates with Peter standing there. You're going to walk up there with your, your credit card saying, which one do you want? It don't work like that. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew six nineteen. Matthew six nineteen. You want me to go back to sex? Now I'm hitting your money. 
Gonna hit the muscles, hit the yeah, sex, you know, hit them. Six nineteen. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, wood, hair, or stubble don't match, gold, silver, precious stone, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. How are you going to deposit coins up to up to heaven? Here God, here's a dollar bill. Put that to my account. How much do I owe you now? Yeah, you know, it's like it's like there's two Jews. And they got in their plate a collection of coins. And with it, it said, To whoever you wish to give, give these to whoever you want. And the two rabbis of Jews are sitting there, Well, what do we do? I don't know. We've got to give some to God, but how much? I don't know. I'll tell you what we do. We'll draw a circle on the ground. And we'll throw up the money in the air. And whatever lands in the circle, we'll give to God. Everything on the outside of the circle, we'll give, we'll, we'll discuss that, who we want to give it to. Another Jew, he says, no, I'll tell you what. We'll throw up the money, that, like you said. And whatever God wants, he'll grab what he wants. Everything that falls to the ground, we'll, we'll give to ourselves. That's how it works. There are too many people that have their treasures built here on this earth and gone. So, about a king. You got to be of God, the family of the king. By the blood, Revelation 1, of the Lord Jesus Christ. If it's not by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not a king. By strength, has to be in God and not flesh. Whether it be fleshes of animals or fleshes of you. Give 120 years the flesh of a horse or a flesh of you. It will be decayed, gone, un of no value and of no workmanship. And I mean workmanship is you get a, a body of a horse that's 120 years, he ain't going to do you nothing, he ain't going to take you anywhere. You, 120 years, you ain't going nowhere but a hole in the ground. You ain't going to press that lid open. One wife. Only one wife where the marriage bed. Flesh joins flesh. No other flesh joining flesh. And what is the gold and silver? What is it? Since so you're not multiply. You can have gold and silver, yes. You gotta buy groceries. You gotta pay your bills. You gotta work. But not in an excessive. And you got to have a Bible. Your own. From a king. King James. And the king was to write his own copy. Now he had it, would have it simple. As a king. I was going to say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's where, that's all. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the law. What if you were as a Christian who would take on the challenge Genesis to Revelation? That'd be interesting. I wonder what God would do with a heart that that. That'd be something to say, I read my Bible all the way through in the air. I wrote my Bible. 
And where I was wrong, I crumpled up the piece of paper, threw it in the garbage, and restarted. That's how they wrote the Bible, you know. The Bible that comes to your left, when they, when they copied, if there was a mistake, they crumpled it up and threw it in the garbage can and began afresh. So, as kings, there's our strength, there's our sex, and there's our money. It's not in ourselves. Only one. And no excess. Now what is excess? You got to go in the strength of God. With your Bible. 